I feel like there were a lot of people that had great intentions yeah. um, in 2020, like after, after George Floyd was murdered. Right. There was a huge, huge, everybody support the black community, put your black square up, yeah. you know. Um, but it, of course, and I don't think people were like disingenuous when they did that, but it's That's just like, time. you know, yeah. the energy's gone. Yeah. Now what is it? You know, but first I want to actually pour some black girl magic. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. this is the right one for this time. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's put So that. this is Black Girl Magic Riesling, mm. which is the first wine that we launched with the Black Girl Magic Collection in 2018. Yes. Mm. Inspired so, inspired by some of the wines that we love in the old world, like in the Alsace region of France, obviously in the Mosul in Germany. Um, and, um, you know, mm. we needed something, you know, an, a noble royal grape, because I feel like that, you noble know, wine. Yeah, yeah, you know, we needed something mm. that really was emblematic of black girl magic, so royalty, mm. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. And so vibrant. Yes. It's an off dry Riesling, so a lot of people tend to think of like Rieslings as really sweet. Mm -hmm. This one has just like a little touch of sweetness, but really, really vibrant acidity. Um, to balance it out perfectly, which we think is like very suiting for like the balance of like black girl magic, you know, as a mantra, as a theme for the wine. So, so amazing. I mean, again, this is just, but that's what I mean. It's, it's so, when it's real, you don't, ha it's not work. No, it's not. It's that, not. Is, that is thing. It's interesting because like with the question that you were just posing, we launched, we started working on Black Girl Magic Wines and the Riesling in 2016, 2017. Yeah. We launched it in 2018. We yeah. launched it at Essence Festival in New Orleans based on like a lot of like milestones we felt like for black women mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. Um, and at Essence Festival or in New Orleans, they had just elected our first black woman as mayor. So we like took the stage for the opening of Essence Festival. We kind of like unveiled Black Girl Magic mm. um, as a wine. I think it's the only time we ever like underestimated a little bit, yeah. <laughs> like how you know how much interest there would be in a wine. We didn't make that much initially. We just thought it would kind of be a commemorative, you know, wine. Really quickly, we learned that there was a lot of um, a lot of black girl magic uh, out there. A lot of black girl magic. <laughs> hey, 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 one of the wine. Hey, let me tell you. So uh, I got this email from like the warehouse. So you guys are getting the insights. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. So I got this email, you know, and the person from the warehouse was saying, "Look, you know, we're really sorry, but like, there was like a bunch of pallets where people like like stole a bunch of your wine and I'm just like, oh, you know, what is it? And they're like, black or magic. And I called her and I was like, we like, we like when someone, when someone <laughs> starts stealing and bootlegging your wine, you like, know no. that like, oh, you, you, you go oh, and tell them. Yeah. Oh, my God, the guns. No, 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 no. 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 Because people don't steal like, uh, like you know, stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Like the worker, it's like the yeah. workers at the warehouse, they were like stealing the wine. So we're like, okay, we're on something here. <laughs> we're like, when, when people want to risk it all, yeah. Like you're willing Risk to, it risk all. It all. <laughs> to, to take um, your products, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing that's interesting is, you know, we kind of launched it, unveiled it in 2018, come 2020, which are talking about the period post, you know, after uh, George Floyd's death, and a lot of black-owned businesses, you know, started to get some, uh, you know, notoriety or whatever. People were supporting them and promoting them. There was an assumption that we created Black Girl Magic in mm. response to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, that event, and it's like, no, actually, we've been had worked on it for like five years prior, <laughs> right? Um, because it is such an important to, to us, it's such an yeah. important um, sentiment, and it's such a, a culturally important phrase that we wanted to express through a wine. It just so happens that it was, you know, be, uh, became very popular during a time where we had all these other things going on, but we've never created a, a wine, a brand, a mantra, uh, you know, content, anything um, in response to mm -hmm. any, you know, racially motivated things that might be going on in the world. It's generally, just like we've been talking about, based on our experiences, our family, you know, who we're, who we're wanting to be, pay respects to or mm -hmm. celebrate, like, with our different products. And, and so on that point, you know, like, our our father's from Camden, Alabama, between Selma and Montgomery. Mm. Our grandfather was born in 1885. Our our father, the first one free. yeah, our father wow. was the youngest of twelve, sharecropped, pick cotton. So we are 
250 years from slavery, 90 years from Jim Crow, 45 years of uh, you know racist uh, property ownership things that, that, that stop us from owning property, you know what I'm saying? Property, and yeah. so this is really paying homage to, Robin and I are able to do what we do because of the people that came before us, mm. right? 100% facts, right? So it really was like, the genesis of that was like, the realization prior to 2020, when we started working on it before that was like, we feel like black women aren't seen in the wine industry. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a very like, you know what? Was we're a gonna a statement. We're gonna show mad love yeah. because we can't do what we do without people in our direct family and our community. No, it's true. And it, at that time, it's just I do feel like there was like I was in a, a similar position where it's like I was doing my wine and hip hop stuff already. Right, you know, right. it was like I used it as a way to stay in front of my wine consulting clients. I was yeah. never trying to do a podcast to get famous or anything. Right. Um, it was just a loss leader to stay in front of people online that were already working with me. Um, but I was already doing the stuff to bridge cultures. And then I'm, I'm a consultant, not really a media dude. So when clients started asking me how to fix this problem, it was just shifting what, the, mm -hmm. what I was offering in my consultancy, you know? Yeah. So it's just, I, I think a big part of um, also the success that we're sharing is being ready when when, right. when preparation meets opportunity. Stay that ready, was kind ready. Of stay what ready. What happened? You know, when stay ready and gotta get yeah, ready. We're, we're, <laughs> that's right. we're, we're already ready. Yeah, no, ready. That, was, that was ill. But like with that, there were, and it was also a weird time. People needed to like jump online, things like that. Yeah. I was put in an interesting position, and then there were several other people that um, I mean organizations lots of different things sprouted up yeah. out of that time there were initiatives started by companies that were saying um, and some people stuck to it some people didn't the yeah. landscape is just extremely different now like right. I'd be interested to, to know what what your observations are from that time and the promises to now and what you've well, actually I tell you, seen I personally was very skeptical so I'm like, okay, like we'll see. <laughs> like y'all are outlining these things, and for a lot of like corporations, it was like big dollars. It was like really aggressive initiatives, and we're like, mm. yeah, I know it was like, wow, yeah, we, like, we mm. finally made it. Yeah. Like, well, we, you know, they gave us Juneteenth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Like, <laughs> Which, by the way, has been a company holiday in our organization for yes. a long time. <laughs> Before this, so we're like, yes. mm. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Like, we're here for it right now, right. but, like, how confident were we that folks were really going to stick with it? I'll say, in my opinion, I feel like, particularly from a retailer's perspective, so, like, national accounts, mass retailers, I have been pleasantly surprised yeah. that they kept to their goals and their ambitions mm. and those strategies that they laid out they've stuck to to this day and right. beyond, right? Because there are longer longer term and, and permanent ambitions that they set forth. Um, I think even really within wine, I feel like I'm as skeptical as I was, I'm still sort of pleasantly surprised to see right. how many folks have stuck with it. We assumed that, you know, by you know, September of that year, mm -hmm. everybody would have moved on we to don't, something we else, thought right? Was canceled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Like they were going to be on to something else. So we're kind of like, I don't know. We'll see. But I think over, and there's definitely some folks who have dropped yeah. off. A lot of, you know, when we're talking about bigger corporations and bigger organizations, like we've seen the the DEI folks get laid off, mm -hmm. you know, like all these kind of things. But I think um, overall, I am surprised at how many have stuck to it and continue those efforts today. I would have discounted a lot of them, to be honest. <laughs> um, but um, I think, you know, uh, overall, they're sticking by what they set by what they set forth to do. Yeah. You know? How long ago? Was, what year is this? That was four four years ago. Five, yeah. yeah. Four years ago. Yeah. We're in twenty. Yeah. Twenty twenty. Yeah. If you asked me then, I would have been like, no way. <laughs> There's no way they're going to keep this up. This is like a fad, right? It's a moment that they're just trying to capitalize on. But I think, though, what I'm optimistic about is I feel like, um, despite doesn't matter like your race or ethnicity, where you grew up from. Like I definitely see like a big belief shift change mm. um, demographically in the US, you know. So I think with corporations kind of sticking by what they said and like having like an understanding that like, you know, the next generations of people, despite if you're black or if you're Latino or if you're Asian, 
um, you know, if you're Native American, wherever you're from, you know, where you're kind of perceived a minority in this country, um, you know, and if if you're um, uh, if you're white and you have you know um, your, uh, European descent, I feel like there's a big belief shift that's changed and happened and has been sticky, and I just think you know future generations of people are. Um, are more inclined to inclusiveness than yeah. exclusiveness. Mm. Damn, yo, she, I, she's spinning so much bars. bars. When's the album coming? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Can I be your yo, right now? all day on this. I'm telling you. I think another important thing is the wine. It's, it's the wine. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's the cocky yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, That's the sauce. Cocky. That's yeah, our yeah, true yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I think another important thing that came from that moment, too, was an understanding of the value mm. of the consumer and yeah. the spend that's equivalent. Oh, right? It's course. equivalent to like the GDP of Canada, I think, right? Or like the <laughs> black, seriously, or like the black consumer, which was never really entertained from like to yeah. be a business perspective for a lot of large corporations. It was very much, you know, our entire 17 years in wine has been kind of advocating, mm. you know, for the, this customer and for the value of this customer, which the industry really just didn't want to hear, right? right. Like, black people don't really drink wine, or they drink, you know, very inexpensive sweet but, wine. But, but I would even just say, like, minorities in general. No, 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 I know. What inclusives of that are, like, old yeah. women, but, like, you yeah. know, Native, I mean, Asian, Latino. That, yeah, just yeah, that yeah. one point yeah. is significant, right? Yeah. And I feel like, that, to me, it feels like this is the first, that period of time was the first true acknowledgement mm. of minorities in whatever category being a valued consumer mm. in this space. Prior to that, it was definitely not seen as such. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like, and you know, that obviously leads into some of these commitments and the shifts in the industry, the products, the marketing, the brand, branding, all of the yeah. things that for us, it feels like the first time that this that these consumers are really seen yeah. and treated as valuable. Yeah. That was That's our best. challenge. We, best. Al we always yeah. stepped into spaces, whether it was within, you know, with retailers, with wholesalers, whatever it is, media, all of these things. We felt like we were always advocating, trying to mm -hmm. prove or show, you know, the value of this consumer, which is what drives us. And it wasn't received, you know, as such. But I felt like a turning point, right? Yeah. Which I have to believe plays into why a lot of these companies and brands are still continuing with these. Yeah. Um, Money talks, baby. Money talks, right? <laughs> At the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's really inspiring right now. It is. Definitely. And there's, you know, there's a lot of opportunity because I think when you look at demographically what America is today, what it's going to be in five years, 10, 15, 20 years, it's a very multicultural society. Right, um, and you know, a minority majority eventually. Mm -hmm. Right, we're we're pretty close to that. So I think there is like a, a real uh, wake up call for the wine industry to to realize that again, going back to access, wine is this beautiful thing, culture, history, all these things. So now, how can we um, instead of thinking about it from a context of this is wine, this is, this is how you have to do it, this is how how you have to think about it, like here's a person, this is their background, this is their culture. How can we, you know, integrate, supplement wine into... To enhance that. And enhance yeah. that, you know, yeah. Yeah. versus um, forcing something. And it's the reality. Yeah. It's, it's the future of the business. It's very much a reckoning, um, which is necessary. I've, I've called a, it the reckoning. It's a reckoning. I've called it a reckoning which so Which is often. necessary for the acknowledgement <laughs> to say what has always worked will not work going forward, mm -hmm. right? So like once you have that admission and understanding like we need to look at this differently going forward for the health of the overall industry, for, for all of wine, right? Um, then we see what we're seeing now, which is people that are open to new ideas, new right. concepts, new inputs, um, uh, cultural context that has had not yet been considered in the past, but is now welcome and um, the industry is receptive to it, which is yeah, new. it's no, brand new. It's, it's totally new and it's big. I, I appreciate it so much. And here much. we are. <laughs> here, 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 here we are. So often I say, I'm like, damn, you know, if it wasn't economical stuff, would they listen? 
Then I think about it, I'm like, you listening, so you're going to learn this shit anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. That's right. But no, it's true. I'm, I'm just glad that like when I started this business in the way that I did it, it's all about um, helping to change the perspective, the um, people's perception on black right. men in America. You yeah. know, I realized mm -hmm. that when I came in and people understood I was in the wine industry, no matter how I rolled, the, the assumptions that people had, and I had to go into rooms where people had a lot, a lot of assumptions, yeah. but I would stay myself and who I was was a person that actually did love wine. And I realized I was able to cross, change a lot of outlooks that right. people started with when they, and look, I had ways that I was looking at them too. Right, <laughs> at right. the end of the day. Right. So, it goes wine, both ways. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, one is having that understanding that we might both think something about one another that yeah. might be off, but two people have to come to it like that, yeah. you know? And then there's also um, the common bond, which so often can be wine, you yeah. know? So, 